Welcome everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper Trading webinar. Uh, getting a little bit of a late start tonight. We had some technical issues, but we're going to get it together and uh, get this puppy kicked off. First, we've got to go through our standard disclaimer, and then we can get over to some charts and start looking at trade setups. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar or other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. All right, without further ado, let's get over to um, – let's do this. I always like to do this at the beginning. Um, um, what, uh, what kinds of uh, instruments would you like to see tonight? I'm going to try to cover as many as I can. Let's type in a, uh, the instrument. I see crude oil coming in. Uh, okay, let me write this down here. We got uh, son of uh, Giuseppe's crude. Gene wants to see ES. Crude and gold, DC. Uh, one we trade. Well, that would be the four in the room, uh, Craig. Yeah, so that's the Russell. CLGC and, and uh, all right, RTY. Okay, here we go. Let's start with let's start with uh, with ES. The Turkish lira. I don't know if I have that on my instrument list. To be quite honest with you, um, that's a good one though. All right, let's get over to uh, screen one where I got an ES chart all teed up, ready to go. Okay. All right, so I see we have quite a few new folks in here and folks visiting us, and if you're on a free trial, welcome, welcome. And uh, let me explain very quickly what you're looking at and then how you can look for trades. Um, this is the E-mini S&P futures chart. Uh, it's $50 a point, four po uh, ticks per point, so twelve fifty per tick of movement. So each point over here is $50. Now, um, we are connected to our broker, and we have a data feed. This is a four-range chart. This is what we trade in the room and live for ourselves, Gary and myself. These are the indicators that we produced from Viper. Uh, you can see the background colors are, are um, red, green, and this transitional color. Bar colors are red, uh, yellow, and blue. We have the predictors, which are real-time support and resistance levels. That's the sort of little bubbly things here. Uh, the power meters are not loading right now. Loading right now for some reason I don't know why, but these are the four trends on the chart. When a market is in a range like it was this morning, so let me orient you real quick to where you're at here. So I'm here in California, the specific time, midnight Pacific was right here. So you can see that ES was pretty range bound um, all night, right? And um, when there's a range, what we like to do is we simply put we put a line at the bottom of the range, which would be somewhere kind of right in here. And we put a line at the top of the range. And the other thing to help you out when you're in a range is that you notice that the colors of the chart are not one consistent color. In here, it looks like a striped shirt. So, for instance, overnight here, this would have been the um, uh, Asian trading session to here, and then the um, European session kicked off at midnight our time because that's their morning. That's 8 in the morning for them, right? And so you were said to be sort of sideways to up. Now, what was this shotgun here? Does anybody remember this? What was this shotgun that occurred right here? It was the non-manufacturing ISM number. That is correct. So you had two numbers in the past two days. You had yesterday they had the uh, manufacturing ism. Now, some of you might be new to this. Okay, so I'm going to explain real quick what's going on here. Okay, so and you need to be aware of this because it affects your trading of the uh, of the uh, futures markets. So this is the site we use. Uh, it's called forexfactory.com. I'm going to show it real quick here. Okay, this is where we get our daily news for uh, potentially high impact news that could move the financial markets. And it is this site right here. Now, before 7 o'clock came, we had warned everybody to put your stops and orders and targets in so that you were ready to go when this ISM number hat come up, comes out. This is not called non-manufacturing PMI-ISM, Institute of Supply Management, 
high impact expected. Now, what happens is that the there are algorithms running out there, and you hear us talk about it all the time. It's called news bots, and they really exist. That's not some kind of funky alien thing that we made up. They, they're algorithms, and they're plugged directly into the Bloomberg da uh, data feed. And in some cases, for the big boys, they, pay, they get the little news like a few nanoseconds before us, we get it. Okay, so what happened is that the news bots saw this number. This this turns out to be a three-year low. See how it really missed big? See that? So as soon as the news bots read that, what they did is they immediately sold off. So what happened here was, in, in, in here, let me show you 6.30. So Gary opened the live room, and we started trading the, the uh, uh, equity markets at 6.30. They go live right here. So at the time, if you look back retroactively, you can see that it was sideways to up. So we were buying support here, buying support, buying support, taking longs. We stopped out. Now, you could have boxed it ahead of the news. We suggested you don't do that. But you could, and this is what I like to do, and this is something I was going to tell you. This works particularly well on ES, if you're an ES trader. I like to look at the swing high and swing lows of the morning. And occasionally I'll put a midpoint in here. I'm not going to do it right now because it's clustered up enough. But you get the idea. In fact, let me blow these lines up just a couple more things so you can make it a little bigger. There we go. See that now. Get this one up. Skinny little line. A couple more pixels. All right. All right. So I had a sell order sitting right here. That'll happen a lot. That'll happen a lot. If you trade ES, you know this. What it'll do is it'll come up. It'll hit that high in the morning, hit that high in the morning. You see it? One, two, three, four times, right? Almost five times right here, right? It can't get through it. There's no follow-through to the upside here. So this is telling you, and I've seen this a million times because I trade ES uh, uh, every morning. This is portending that you're going to take one more shot down here, which it did. And what I've noticed is that when it breaks these swings like this, this is telling you, portending that the 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 move that's going to happen is going to be down when it takes that support level out. So I had a resting sell order right there, and I got filled. So so now um, let me ask you this question. I'm going to advance this chart and see how many of you can do this. Uh, let's see here, between here and here. I'm going to just do a quick check to see between here and when it broke. Now, if you missed this short entry when it broke support right here, were there other places to get in? And how many short trades set up between here and here? Now, some of you might not know that because I haven't really just sort of explained anything in detail yet. But there are places to get in on, on small retraces. So we're counting short trade entries between, not counting this one, where were the other spots you could have gotten in? How many do you see? Now, if you're brand new to us, you might not see any because you don't really understand, you know, sort of the setup. So we're, we'll explain it to you. I'll give you five seconds. Counting short trades between the two lines. How many do you see? If you know our system and our setups and how we trade it, you'll be able to count that. If you don't, it's okay. We're going to get ready to explain it to you. Okay? Okay, four more seconds. How many shorts? Shorting ES. Two seconds. Time's almost up. Take your, cast your vote. One second. All right, time's up. All right, so here's how we trade downtrends. Is that we are what you call retracement traders. So let's show an example. Here we have the case where it broke. Now a lot of you might not have had an order here. Okay, so that's okay. And and quite frequently you might miss the first leg of any. Uh, um, trend move up or down okay but we look for the um, retracement so here is an example of the thrust down 
coming off that bad ism news, right? And then here is the retracement right here. See? So there's three locations. And for those of you who are new, I'll just quickly explain it. Um, uh, in fact, I'll use examples. I'll use examples while I explain it. When a market comes into the, this thick line is called the mid band, and there's four bands above it, four bands below it for a total of eight. When a market comes in in a downtrend between these two bands, and it hits the mid band, comes close to the mid band, or slightly above the mid band, this is considered to be what's called a mid band trade. In this case, in a downtrend, it would be short. That would be a downtrend short. So you can see here that these bars encroached into that that uh, that space right there. So that was the first one. It's called a mid band short. Now we also have an entry called a minimum criteria trade. So in order to do that in a downtrend, you've got to come above the stealth line, this sort of little snaky red line, and line two, and close above it, and come into this band right here, which is band number three. So here's an example of a minimum criteria short trade. We don't have it on here, but there is an occasion where a downtrending market would come up into this band area right here and quite possibly even touch line six. Those are called deep retracement, or Gary calls them phantoms a lot of times in the room, right? Those are where the market goes. Sometimes the bars will turn blue. Uh, just to be clear, that's not a trend change when that happens. Okay, the bars might turn blue up there. And a lot of people mistake that for trend changes. Okay. Now I'm going to do another exercise. So it looks to me like the correct answer was three. Because there is one more. Um, uh, uh, my box right here there's one last gasp before a little bit of a double bottom down here on es right here where it punched just a, the, the minimum criteria is just met with these bars right here and then you didn't really get almost a scalp off and then you scratched out and that was it on the double bottom so this whole event lasted between 10 and 15 minutes 714 is right here now i'm going to advance the chart reconstructing real time at 714 a.m pacific yeah, that was three. Yeah, so the correct answer was three. Yeah, one mid band here, not counting this one. And um, minimum criteria here, two. And minimum criteria here, three. Good. Most of you got that. Because some of you put in two, case most were threes, and, a case, and there was a couple of fours. It's good. It's good you're seeing them. That's the main thing, right? Now, I'm going to advance this chart, reconstructing real time. And you tell me when you think the trend has changed by typing in a TC. Okay, here we go. Okay, here's the here's that minimum criteria trade, right? Going down, get a little double bottom. Double bottom, come up. I'm gonna check the mid band. Go up into the to the uh, just under line six. Okay, typing in T when you think the trend has changed. Okay, now it's 719 Pacific, reconstructing real time. Okay, here we go. There's 720. We're 20 minutes into the news event. TC, when you think the trend has changed. You don't have to call out a trade. This is not a question of where the trade is. That's not the question. The question is TC trend change. All right, let me go a couple more bars. 723. All right, I'm going to stop it there. Now, by definition, before I answer the trend change question, I'm going to ask you a, 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 another quick one. Is this still a short trade here, yes or no? Let me go back. Let's pretend we don't know what's happened. Let's go, let's go look at it as it would have happened. Is this, a tra is this a still a short trade, yes or no? Look at the background color and remember our description of deep retracement trades over here. Didn't we say you can come all the way to line six in that band and still be short, right? So here it comes up, kisses, rolls over, deep retracement. I told you the bars can turn blue sometimes, right? So, yeah, 
That's still a legitimate um, short trade, right? Deep retracement. Now, look, uh, just to be clear, you don't have to take all the trades that we show and qualify for these different criteria, minimum criteria, deep. The mid band is a good go-to trade because you have sufficient retracement off of the late, the nearest swing at the outermost port of the band. Normally, this is 20 to 24 ticks between here and here. That's why these are so good in a trend because you're expecting the momentum to return at least to the swing, like this kiss and roll right here, and then it takes it out. See that? Now, in this case here, where this rolled over, we would have had expectations for if, it, if the trend was going to continue for it to break the mid-band, get through line two, and continue down to a fresh low. That would, that would constitute trend continuation and a deep retracement. However, if you follow what would happen subsequently, and I want to I want to I want to say one other thing uh, before I proceed. Was this low the same as this low, or was it slightly higher? A. B. Was A slightly higher than B? Yes or no? Was this swing, where you came and rolled off that minimum criteria trade, was this slightly higher than that? And had that ever happened in the whole sell-off for 15 minutes? Yes. So one of the things in that we call this breadcrumbs that you want to, that the market leaves for you if you, if you can sort of you know fine-tune your trading spidey sense is what we like to say is I always make note of where that swing is in a sell-off. Now, conversely, in the top, it would be the similar thing, right? We go put it in a swing, and then it goes and tries to test it, right? It doesn't quite get there. Now, what, the, what is this telling you when you see this condition either up or down? When you get a swing that's just, it's well, it, it's important the fact that it didn't break it. it. All these breakdowns were lower highs and lower lows, right? All the way down, all the way down, except for this. Tells you that it's a slightly higher low. There's bottoming action. That's right, Kevin. There's a, a possible change in momentum. You may be getting a deep retracement. Possible trend change afoot. Now, when we notice the fact that this, this now is a second higher low, a substantially second higher low, we are starting to set up what's called a pattern of slight of, uh, of, um, you know, sort of a here, let me do it this way. I think it's the best way to explain it. Sort of a little bit of a beginning of an uptrending channel here starts to set up. See it? This is one more confirmation that quite possibly a trend change is afoot. So I'm going to take this off because that did not happen, right? Now, this all happened from a time perspective. The bottom occurred around 708, 709. You test it again at 7.14, so there's plenty, plenty of time to observe this. You had five minutes here, and then you retraced up here in another three, four minutes, five minutes. And then it, this, this thing here went all the way to 7.18, so between here and here is 10 minutes to observe this price action. The, way I, the reason I like ES is because while you get some good movement, particularly at news, you get rapid movement, maybe not as much as NASDAQ or Russell. But the tick value is twice as high, and there's plenty of time to observe what it's doing. It doesn't just rocket 180 ticks in your face before you flip it and have a chance to do anything with it, right? That's why I like ES. If you're learning at a uh, beginner or me medium uh, uh, trading level, it's a good one to start with. Plus, it has micros. So you can trade for as little as $1.25 a tick on the micro, which is one-tenth of the uh, full E-mini contract. Now, notice what happens here. Now, let's speak to the trend change issue. Yeah, it's not as whippy. It's definitely not as whippy. Um, you, you, you know, the trade-off here, though, I want, I want to go back and say something, is you, you, you should try to make sure that the range-bound trading um, is in your sort of arsenal of trading tools, if you will, because it does this a lot. Okay. So if you say, well, you know, I want to trade ES, but I'm really not a good range-bound trader. Well, you know, you're going to learn with ES, and it can stay in ranges for a long period of time. 
especially in a choppy market. And as long as those ranges are our minimum criteria for that is 20 to 25 ticks from top to bottom. If there's 20 to 25 ticks in here, there's enough meat on the bone to make some money. And the key there, of course, I'm not going to get the sort of rat hole into this, but I want to just speak to it so you know how to deal with it. Uh, and this is excluding news. If a market is sideways to up in a range, you are buying support and taking profit at the top. Buying support, profit at the top, buying support. This never filled, never got anything there. Now let's go back and talk about the trend change issue. Here we go. Hit the bottom. We had a minimum criteria. Scratch trade. Comes up, does a swing. That's a deep retracement. Blue bars. Rolls over. We get a scalp. We got through the mid-band. We got something out of it. Not much, but a little bit. Scratched out on the trail. And then we punch through it and we start to head higher. Now, what else happens right here? And this is all little clues that you got to sort of pick up on with your spidey sense. What happens when we punch through this swing and this swing and we go up to here? What occurs right in here? What is going on? There's something that happened here that wasn't over to the left. And what is it? What is it? Look at that. This is early adopters will figure this out. Early adopters are uh, traders who over time are able to, uh, how would you say, quickly uh, interpret changes in what the market's doing. Yeah, the background turns green. That's not a phantom. No. That's what I just explained, John. Okay, see, see the difference between this and this? The background turns green. The bars are predominantly blue. You've taken on a major swing. You've had two higher lows. And what is happening now to the mid-band? It's moving up and turning green. So I want to clarify something because I, I think there's been this, you know, I don't want to say it's an obsession, but, you know, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a deep retracement trade can sometimes be trend changes. Okay, you just need to know that. That's the risk of that. In my view, uh, you know, and different people can look differently. You know, it takes buyers and sellers to make a market, right? We all know that. In, in my view, once you get above here, you know, that, that phantom's pretty much off the table. You know, you're, you should be now looking at the long side trade, particularly that you've got the mid band that's moved up and turned green. You have to have a green background. The bars are blue. You have a strong green stealth line right here. All the indications are that the trend has changed. Now, let me do another pop quiz here. As this was happening, what was happening to the other markets? Because we don't trade in a vacuum. In other words, it, what I'm saying is we don't just seal ourselves in a jar and look at ES and don't look at whatever else is going on in the world. Can anybody remember? Anybody in the room and traded this and remember what was going on when ES was doing this? Now, if you have the if you have the ability to have two or three or more like four, I have four big screens. You can have other markets on there. Let me tell you what was happening. I don't have the charts are all tucked on other things. I'm going to bring them over. I'm just going to explain to you what was going on. By the time that ES finally broke, and she's normally a laggard, okay, and that's why it helps to at least look. Here's the thing: you don't have to have all these other charts on your screens. If you're limited to maybe, you know, a modest one or two screen setup, it's okay. You can put one instrument on one and one on the other or however you want to set it up. But at the time this occurred, if you recall, and I do, RTY had already run 100 ticks. Flipped out of the short and ran up. It was at least 80 ticks by the time that broke. This is why, you know, you can, you, you know, you, you know, you look at the Russell NASDAQ, if you watch it, it had run like 100 ticks off the bottom. If you watch it, it leads. Between that and the Russell are normally the leaders of the pack. YM had flipped. I can't remember how much it ran up. It was up probably maybe 40 ticks. It doesn't run as much as the other ones. And the, one of the more important thing is we know that gold had now 
started to sell off. Gold was dropping. So what I'm trying to impress upon you is that we, when we, when we, you know, make comments that all is right with the world and things are going as they should, that means that all of the equities are in sync. They're all synced up together. They're doing what they should. Equities running up. And as the news came out, and we're going to look at a gold chart. When this news came out and this huge sell-off occurred in the equities, gold rocketed like 200 ticks. And it had just come off a retracement trade that we called out, and I caught that. So that's the way this works. If all is right with the world in the morning, the equities, when they run up, gold will sell off. And when the equities are selling off, gold should be going up. It is a it's a um, a mirror image, okay? So was it safe to take a long trade in here, given this condition? What do you think? All this was going on in the world. It already happened. We watched it in the room all together. Remember? And was it okay to go ahead and take a long here? We would normally never do that. Sort of a breakout trade, and we wouldn't want to normally want to pay, pay back. But yes, that was absolutely a perfect place to get long because look what happened. ES finally follows suit. It finally follows suit. So if you like Geritol and you like things that are a little slower, but you're glad to see, uh, you know, it finally follows suit, it normally does. Rarely will they be countered. But here's the thing: if you trade, trade, take trades like that up at line six instead of the mid band it is kind of a quasi breakout trade but it's perfectly okay when you put a tight stop on it right now i'm going to advance the chart and i'm going to reconstruct it from 7:23 a.m pacific through uh the rest of what happened up to eight o'clock now when you think you see a trade and you don't have to call out what it is long or short or mid band or whatever you don't have to t you don't have to say exactly what it is you just type in the letter T the reason I do the exercise this way is because as you can see by reconstructing real time tomorrow morning is an example when you see charts that look like this and the bars are coming at you and you don't know the right hand side when you see the right hand side unfold as I'm showing you you will know what to do right okay okay here we go all right, starting the exercise at 7.23. Here we go. Looking for any kind of trade setup. So that would be a T. When you see a T, when you see a trade, you put in the lead, just type in T. Boop, just like that. Okay, here we go. 7.26. So here, just going back, if you had taken this trade here, you're already in it and you're trailing the stop. We all know that, okay? All right, here we go. 7.27. 728, look where it came all the way back to. Isn't that something? Look at that. That came all the way back to where the V-shaped bottom, back to where it broke when the, when the news came out. Isn't that amazing? Anybody ever see that before? Think it's good to know where those swings are? Now, we don't know what's going to happen. What I'm showing you here, you don't know the future yet. We're at 727. We're 27 minutes after the news event occurred, right? Okay, let me get your thoughts before we proceed. What might happen off of that swing? Any thoughts from the team? What might happen that you've retraced all that movement back to the swing? What might happen? Let's think about it for a second. Well, it could, it could blow right through it. That's true. Um, well, it's run up. Let's do the math. The bottom was down here at uh, was 55, roughly, and you've gone back to 82. That's 27 points or uh, 92 ticks, which is enormous on ES. What could start to happen right here? If we were to start, you know, sort of anticipating in our in our in our little repertoire of trading tools. Yeah, that's right. That's right, David, Chris, pullback, retracement, Gene. Possible reversal, head back down, pull back Kevin, Walter. Profit taking might come in, yes. There could be a chance to get to uh, get get some a, a setup occur somewhere, right? Okay, well let's play it out together. Here we go. 
Let's reconstruct what happened here in real time. All right, so we kiss it. Let's wick it perfectly on the button. Okay, uh-oh, uh-oh, what, what's she doing? A whole bunch of you said pullback, right? There it is. There it is right there. You think these auto trading programs and these algos don't know where these swings are? Of course they do. Everybody sees it. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. What's that? Remember, when you see a trade set up, you're typing in the letter T. All right? All right, here we go. Now we're at 729. Okay. All right. There's a 729 right there. Let's see if we get to 730. Here's 730, 31. We're 31 minutes after the news. 731. Remember, when you see a trade set up, you're typing in the letter T. Here we go. Proceeding on. 731. Okay, there's 732. 733. 735. 36. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. So, as I recall, and we're going to look at some other, you know, before we run out of time, I want to get through this because I would really want to show a couple other charts and correspond with how this movement goes uh, to really help everybody out. The trade setup was right in here. Everybody sees that, right? This was clearly a mid band trade. And it did retrace off of the, uh, as expected, off of the uh, swing level. This is exactly what you look for. So if you miss a first leg on any move like that, you've got to wait for the market to pull back. Now, let's do this. I'm going to bring over a gold chart. Just give me one second here, please. Because uh, I don't, I want to show gold and I want to show the Russell because I explained that, that we look for what's called correlation in the market when the world is as it should be. You're always looking for correlations, correlations. Anybody know what a correlation is? What do we mean by that? That's some kind of fancy word I'm trying to mess with you. What does correlation mean? Looking for correlations. What are we talking about? Anybody? That's some scary word that I'm trying to scare everybody with a big, oh, it's a correlation. He's, what the heck is he talking about? Maybe I get my Wikipedia dictionary out here and look that thing up. Yeah, it's just a fancy word for something that's related. It's either going to move in a very similar manner, which we expect the equities to do, right? It's going to move like, it's going to be, it's called like a like, it's going to be a like thing, right? And I want to, I'm going to show this in just a second. I'm trying to load up, uh, put up a fresh... Uh, gold chart here right next to ES and then I'll introduce the Russell and show how you can correlate them together now this is really powerful thing to do because uh, it raises your confidence level in taking the trade right if you are nervous and concerned and scared and thinking something gonna flip and you're gonna take a big stop out you're nervous to take the trade if you have correlation in markets where things are moving like they should, then you can have a higher confidence level in taking that trade, like shorting gold or getting long ES, right? So I'm going to show you how to see that. It's very powerful. Um, it's what the futures markets are known for, is the consistency of the correlations. Um, and because the algos are running that way, okay, that's the way the, that's the, way the algos are running. They're set up to all run that way. So when it does it, we're not surprised, right? We're like, that's why we say things like all right with the world because it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Let's take a look at gold after the 7 o'clock news. As I recall, I'm going to get, let me see if I can get this chart properly oriented. Well, no, it wouldn't have been stopped out. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't, Denise. Uh, and in fact, I'll talk about that. But let me, I'm going to get through this first.
Um, where am I here? Oh, all right. So here's the pre-market on gold right here. Stand by. I want to show this real quick. Here's right before the news. Does this does this range look anything like this range on ES? This range is down here, and this range is up here. Okay. And what happened after the news with gold? It went straight up like a rocket. In fact, I believe that Gary and I had called this mid-band pullback long right in here, and that's where I got filled. I forget where I exactly I got filled. There was some slippage on that trade. But I was already long in here ahead of the news. So we just rode that up. Now, was there another chance to get in on gold? I'm going to blow gold up. And then we'll circle back and correlate the two. And then we'll put the Russell in the spot of the ES. Here's the first leg of the blow up when uh, the equities had tanked. Now, was there any other spots to get in gold? after this initial thrust up here's the thrust was there any spots to get in gold after that initial thrust just like ES did down right that's the thrust up were there any retracements how about like right in here how about any of these right here this in fact as I recall I think Gary had literally had a box drawn right in here that sat right there were these all places to get in and jump in along? Scalp, 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 runner. Yes, of course they were. They were all good trades. Okay, here's the next leg up. One more mid-band here. In the interest of saving time, I'm just going to show them. I'm going to run out of time here and, and pretty quickly, so I want to I want to get clip through this a little quicker than I normally would. All right, so we see that. So let's come back over here. Let's discuss the transition from down to up on ES and from up to down on gold. Does this area here where you were getting capitulation around the mid-band on gold and then its subsequent breakdown here look anything like this? only on the reverse right in here can everybody see what I'm talking about here gold was was uh, the news bots were still driving the market higher it double topped up here off this mid band it came down it capitulated just underneath the mid band and then began to sell off Here's a mid-band trade right there. Could you have shorted this? Yes. If you don't, you miss the first leg. We talked about that, right? Sometimes you miss the first leg. If you miss the first leg, you wait for a pullback, and there it was. At the same time, almost exactly at the same time, ES was taken off. It's a mirror image, almost always. Occasionally it won't, and if it doesn't work out, if one were, let's, let's say ES, there was follow through, and for some odd reason, gold continues to sell off, or I mean, go higher, you dump those trades. Don't get into an anticipation hope trade where you're like, gold's not doing what it should, right? Why is gold still going up and ES is going up? That makes no sense. I think that happened the other day. It occasionally it will, but it, normally it would only last for a short span of time. As I recall, I think that happened on maybe Tuesday morning. There was a short period where gold was fighting the tape. All the equities were heading up, and gold was still heading up, and then eventually it, it like triple top and then tanked. Remember that? Now, let me bring the Russell over. I want to show how Russell sometimes can lead and take a huge run, and you can count on gold and ES following. It's almost like, what's a good analogy to that? It'd be like, you know, does anybody have grandkids or kids that are younger that, you know, little Kennedy, she's five and a half. She's got those short little legs, long little short legs, whatever. But she can run like 
a you know what out of you know where. You know what I mean? And I'm old grandpa. I'm like, you know, come on, bab, bab, run, keep up. She's like 30 yards ahead of me. All right. That's like the Russell. Think of the Russell as like a young kid that's just running, running, running like a like a bat out of you know where. Right. And we're left behind trying to keep up. That's what ES and gold are like compared to the Russell. Okay, I'm loading a Russell chart. Stand by. Yep, just a second. Give me one second. It's loading right now. There we go. Come on, Rusty Bird. Now, that being said, uh, if you've traded the Russell, you know that um, sometimes it doesn't respect the mid-band on pullbacks. If you're a mid-band trader and you like it to respect, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So you can get a little whack-a-mole. That means you can lose money and you have to catch a big runner. That's the way NASDAQ is too, right? Sometimes you'll get whack-a-mole. It'll go up and down in a huge range. You get beat up a little bit, and then you got to take some leverage. you got to leverage up a little bit. That means putting maybe two contracts on where you traded one when you got beat up to make it back, right? We don't normally like to do that, but sometimes you do. And then you catch a 100-tech runner, and you make it back, and you're in the green. Let me show you what Russell was doing exactly at the same time with this news. Stand by. The chart's up. I'm just loading it up right now. I'm just getting uh Jim, Christmas. So many, so many bars. Okay, you ready? Here it is. Looking to the left, before the news, Russell looked like, here, let me go back so we can put gold right next to it and, and sort of sequence the two together. Um, let's go, let's pull this chart back and blow it up a little bit more so you can get the whole effect of what's going on here. There we go. Okay, here's the run up on gold, as you recall. And here's the run down on the Russell to the right. Now, I like I said, if you can – right now, um, uh, you know, flat, street, flat screens are pretty cheap. You know, for like a buck, a, buck and a quarter, you know, I don't know what they are now, buck 50, you can go out and get yourself a big, huge, nice flat screen. You know, plug it in, and it's going to make a world of difference in your trading. You're going to see so much more. It's going to be like the whole world's like revealed to you, right? When you can see. So I've got, like I said, I've got ES huge on one right in front of me. I traded actively. I've got gold right next to it, mirror image. I've got Russell and Nasdaq on the other screen, and I got uh, crude in the four screen. Huge just screen. I can see everything like right in front of me. So here in the before the news, this was the range on Russell. See how much larger it was and not as contained as gold and ES? See how you had a, right, a huge spike up here? Oops, what the heck is that doing there? Does everybody see the difference? And then right as the news was getting ready to occur, you had a tight consolidation box right here, anticipating the break. So here was the break, gold running up, just like, you know, gold, here's, e, here's uh, Russell selling off like ES. Now, if you recall, the retracements on ES, ES were not that deep. We only had, what, a couple of minimum criteria and barely a mid-band, right? Look how sometimes the Russell will go just a little higher like this. This is what she, characteristic of what she does, right? See? She'll go up a little bit higher, a little bit higher, sometimes all the way to KISS line 6. So if you're going to trade Russell in comparison to ES in a downtrend like this, you got to be prepared, prepared for more deep retracements as opposed to minimum criteria retracements. Let's show that contrast between the Russell and um, ES in that sell-off. Let's go back to the sell-off on, on ES right here. These, these retracements, one, two, three on ES, which were fairly controlled and mild, were deeper 
on Russell here, here, and here. Right? You see the contrast and the depth of retracement? Yeah, Jeff, go ahead and get your 32-inch screen. Get a 42-inch screen, whatever you can afford. You should get at least two of them if you can. Minimum two. It's just going to see just the, 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 the you know, the trays are going to be so much uh, larger and easy to see. Absolutely. All right, now here's the transition on ES, and here's the transition on the Russell. Let's see when this uh, break occurred on the Russell up right here. This flip occurred at 7.12 and change. This flip occurred at what time on ES? Right here, 7.17, a full four to three to four to five minutes later. This flip right here is this flip. Let me get all this stuff off of here because this is really starting to be confusing. Clean this up a little bit. And this is why there's some value if you don't trade the Russell to watching it, at least in the room, because it normally almost always portends a trend change ahead of when ES flips. This box on ES, which goes from 715 to 719, is this box on the Russell right here. This box right here on the Russell. Oops, sorry. starting at 7.12 and ending at 7.15. A full three to four minutes before this flip. That happens almost every day on either a flip to the upside or a flip to the downside. The Russell will often lead ES by two to five minutes. Now, by the time that ES had fully flipped over here by 7.19, 7.20, Let's look at where the Russell was. It was all the way up here. All the way up here. I mean, 61 to 68 is 70 ticks. It had gone 70 ticks up all before ES had modestly broke up by maybe 20 ticks. So these correlations are very powerful, right? Um, and then, of course, you can see that, that ES took off like a little bird. And then Russell finally, finally followed suit. See these deep retracements on Russell? Here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about, deep retracements on Russell, kind of faking you out sometimes. This area right here on the Russell that occurred approximately 729 to 736, right here, is this area on ES, right here. Now, I have a question for you. Would you rather trade the one on the right or the one on the left? And you're trying to buy it. Would you rather trade the box on the right or the one on the left, keeping in mind that the market is still in an uptrend and you're trying to buy it? I'll take I'll take Essie all, every, all day long, all day long, every day. Yeah. Yeah, well, there were more chances to get in, you know, so, you know, by contrast, Kevin saying, well, you know, look at all these retracements to the mid-band on chance to get in on Russell. That's true. When she behaves herself, you know, I'm not, I don't mean to disparage this instrument. That's not what I'm doing. It's, I'm, I'm saying that, I'm simply saying that the price action on Russell is very different than ES. And it's also very different than NASDAQ and it's different than YM. They all have their own personalities. If you make good money trading Russell, by all means, stick with it. I personally like ES. It suits my trading style. I watch it every day. I have for years. You get to know the personality of instrument when you trade it for a long period of time. Yes, there's, there's huge correlation between these markets. You know, you can safely take, um, you know, if I'm looking at the other screens and I'm looking at the YM NASDAQ screen and they are screaming, smoking up, and the Russell's already run 50 ticks, I'm going to take an ES long, no brainer, no brainer, right? And I'm going to short gold too. I'm just going to go ahead and short gold. I'm looking at the gold chart on my left-hand screen, and that puppy's 
rolling over and start kissing and rolling, kissing and rolling, heading down. I'm going to, I'm going to short that pup. I'm going to load the boat. Sure enough, that was beautiful. That was a beautiful drop on gold and a beautiful run up on ES. See that? See that everybody? All right. Well, you know, if you can put this, you know, you, you can, if you have a huge screen and you only have one, you can put two, like an ES and a gold right next to each other. If you want to see more charts and you have two big screens, you could put um, ES on one and maybe another one like Russell or, you know, YM. YM uh, tends to follow uh, uh, ES closely. It's the mini Dow. It's $5 a tick, right? And you can put gold on your other screen. And then watch, watch what they're all doing. Log into the room. You, you know, a good way to do it would be keep a separate PC for your trading, right? So your tradings are clean. Plugged in, I have mine hardwired right into that high-speed modem. So all my trades are clean, separate. And then when I go in the room, I have my laptop right next to it. So my laptop, I can observe, I can speak, I can you know, talk to Gary, and everybody in the room, whatever. And that's all separate. And then what you're looking at here is the screens connected directly to my hardwired trading computer. Yeah. No, we won't have the room open for non-farm payroll. So let me speak to that before we wrap. Um, cause that's a good question, Gene. Um, and then we'll, uh, let me speak to that directly and then we will, we'll, uh, we'll wrap things up here. Let me get my little web, where's my web browser. Here we go. Forex factory. Let's put tomorrow up. Tomorrow is, uh, Friday, October, uh, 4th, right? Today was the third. Yeah. All right. Now here's what I want to show. Here's what I want to show. Okay. It's right here. All right. Okay. So for those of you that are new and trying to understand uh, the severity of uh, news impacts on financial markets, tomorrow is a huge day. A lot of uh, market participants, the big banks, big trading houses, the Fed are all looking at these employment numbers. Most of you know that, of course, right? Um, so, you know, uh, uh, we, we're still not going to open the room till 5:55, so that's going to be a full 25 minutes after non-farm payroll has been released. If you're an early bird and you're up watching the markets, and if you're in a trading combine with one up trader or top step, or just for your own safety sake, you really want to give the market a couple of five minutes at least to settle down after these high impact news. Because I'll tell you what's going to happen: all those news bot algos that are plugged directly into Bloomberg. They get advanced notice of these numbers, and they're going to be buying and selling a nanosecond or two and shotgunning when this comes out. I guarantee you. I don't have to be there to see it. I know it's going to happen because it always does. Okay. Now, after that, what's going to happen is that the news bots, after they run their course, either pushing a market up or down, they're going to settle into a groove. They're going to start selling off again, or they're going to get a V top or bottom. They'll start reversing. Then you might see some opportunities. So what can happen is that when we open the room at 5.55 and I get in there at maybe like 6.15, sometimes the market can get choppy after that because a lot of traders have already made their money, right? So that happens a lot. And, but eventually then there'll be some follow through to the upside or downside. So we have to really get careful and pick our spots. We'll be watching the equities, right? ES, Russell, I'll be watching the other two. We'll be look, I'm sure Gary will be trading crude like he always does, right? Crude pit open at 6. Now, this doesn't happen until 11 o'clock. So we're going to be out of the room and done trading by when Fed Chair uh, Powell starts talking. But so, later in the morning here, you know, you, you could get some movement off of that when he starts, you know, I don't know if he testifies in front of Congress or this is a speech or I'm not sure exactly what that is. But we'll be done by then. OK. Yeah. So just keep in mind, if you're going to trade that first half an hour before we open the room, you got to wait a couple five minutes, pick your spots. You don't want to go into the six o'clock hour all beat up trying to dig out of a hole. Uh, that's never any fun. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recorder. Thank you for sticking around.